Hi there. Today I will show you how T-Plan Robot Enterprise integrates with Java. This video aims at developers and testers who have at least a basic experience in Java programming. Let's create a new project first. It is basically a folder on your hard drive which will store your test scripts, component images and test results. As soon as we create it, we will be prompted to create a test script. Robot supports two formats, TPR scripting language and Java. We will create the Java one. Once you have the test script, you can create the Java code in a few ways. The easiest option is to use the script recorder. After you set it on through the toolbar button, it will record all your mouse and keyboard actions performed on the connected desktop to the script. For example, let's double click the calculator icon on the desktop to start the application. To create custom actions, use the, comp use the component capture. For example, in this case, we will use it to create a verification point, testing whether the screen displays the calculator or not. For this purpose, we will create a new collection called Calculator. and one image of the title and the icon. In the action screen we will select to do nothing when the component is found and terminate the script when the component is not found. To insert individual commands into the script you may take advantage of the command wizard. It will pop up when you click onto the green plus icon located next to every empty line in the editor. To make our script complete we will add the connect command which will connect the script to the current test environment. We will also press the Alt plus F4 key in the end of our script to make sure that the calculator application gets closed properly. Let's execute the test script now to make sure that it works properly. Now let's look at the script code. It is a standard Java class which can be updated by hand. Java developers may want to develop it further and add custom code. Though Robot does not integrate directly with Java IDEs, integrated development environments, such as Eclipse or NetBeans, its project structure is designed to be IDE compatible. It means that you may create an Eclipse or NetBeans project within a Robot project and then work on the test scripts in both environments at the same time. Let's demonstrate this feature on NetBeans. To create a shared project, select File, New Project, choose Java Project with existing sources, provide the name 
of your robot project and add the source folder to the project. Now NetBeans will display the project in the form of a tree where you can see the test script we created earlier. It now displays errors because it doesn't know where to look for the robot libraries. To fix it, right-click the project, select Properties, and in the Library screen, add all the jars from the Robot Installation folder to the project. The errors will go away and all the Java code must compile properly. Now let's edit the script. We will add a new line which will print out a message to the standard output. After we save the test script and switch back to robot, you will notice that the script editor in robot automatically refreshed. When we modify the test script here, save it and go back to NetBeans, we will see the same effect. This means that you can work in both programs on the same test script at the same time. One typically uses robot to create the automation code and NetBeans for the integration or the glue code. Now let's have a look at the script structure again. The test script class contains two methods. The test method contains the automation code in a try-catch block. The main method contains the start code, which allows to start the script as a standalone application. To demonstrate this capability, let's start it from NetBeans. But before we do that, we will have to change one of the arguments to true. This value will make the script not to terminate the Java VM after it finishes. Let's execute it now. As you can see, the script executed properly from NetBeans and the text that we added the code for was printed out into the console. This functionality can be used right away for a simple integration into other, uh, into other programs through the CLI interface. Another option is to reuse the start code to integrate robot with a third-party Java program. Let's have a look at the start code now. As you can see in the first line we instantiate the script class. In the next line we instantiate the application support class which is, mm, which is part of the robot framework. In the next line, we use it to create 
the automated runnable and in the last line we start the automated runnable. The runnable can be started synchronously through a call of its run method or asynchronously from a separate thread as you see it in the example. As an example of Java integration, let's put our test script into a JUnit test script. To do so, we have to first add a test folder to our NetBeans project. Call it JUnit. Open. Now let's add, let's create a new JUnit class. We'll put it to the same package as the test script. Now JUnit executes all methods which are annotated with the test annotation. We may re reuse this prototype. We will simply uncomment it and insert the start cone in there. Before we start it, we have to fix a few things. First of all, we have to create the array of input command line options. So we may leave it empty We may either leave it empty, just like here, or even better, we will add the minus n option, which will s which will make robots skip the UI and execute everything just in the terminal. This is recommended for deployments, and it's more, uh, it's faster, and it's less uh, resource intensive. We also have to change the flag at the end of the call back to false because otherwise the script would terminate the JUnit harness after it, f it finishes execution. What we also have to do is to change the way the runnable is started. We have to start it synchronously here, which means take the runnable and call the run method. As the last step, we want to change the code in a way that the JUnit test script fails when the robot test script fails. The robot test script indicates the result through the exit code. When it is zero, it means pass. When it is anything else, it means fail. So let's simply test the value and fail the script if it's not zero. Now the test script is complete. Let's save it. And now let's start the JUnit test from NetBeans.
as you can see the JUnit test succeeded and you may see the console message which we added earlier in the uh, in the in the terminal that's it for today thank you for your patience and if you want to learn more about Java test scripts or integration don't hesitate and go to our website where you will find plenty of documentation on the subject. Thank you.